church family and friends. This is a day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. So thankful to be coming to you again with our marriage te teachings. Yes. God has been so good. Yes. He has been so good. Mm -hmm. uh, don't want to go into um, some issues that we had. Mm -hmm. All I can say, God is good. Amen. He is good mm -hmm. and worthy to, to be praised. praised. Amen. Yes. So uh, I'll just put it this way. We don't look like what we've been through, right? Amen. 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 Our God is faithful. He's faithful. Yes. And he's a restorer. And I thank God that he's given us each other over the seasons of 50 plus years, 51 the years. 51 coming up. June, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, June 19th, 51 years of marriage for the Hamptons. We had no idea that when God brought this little girl, this boy together 51 years ago that he had a plan and over and over again he would continue to um, heal us. Yes. And use He's us to heal each other. He's a heal. <laughs> yes, he has. And you just don't know. We love marriage. We love the covenant that God put in place because we didn't start out with an example or model in our homes for what marriage should look like or even understood the purpose of marriage according to the Word of God. But what we did know is we wanted to do things God's way. We wanted to please the Lord. Yes. We wanted our life to matter. We wanted to build a legacy of faith and family for the other generations. I think I think one of the things that um, was really special for you and I, Curtis, is that I think I just had the feeling that our marriage was not just about you and I. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was about uh, something greater than us. I felt like when we held hands at the altar and the Lord's Prayer was being sung, I felt another presence there. Yes. I couldn't stop crying because it was like it was something bigger than me. You know, right. Of course I was a little frightened because <laughs> I was so young. Yes. Right out of high school and you were in the Air Force and you know we were getting ready to embark on this world of the unknown and uh, but at the same time you know it was a little scary yes but I just felt like God had a plan for something bigger than us yes. and you and I had a dream mm -hmm. of the way we wanted marriage to be fortunately during that time we saw more of what it looked like because it was modeled out in our communities and That's right. people honored marriage and and usually you know growing up in high school it wasn't unusual even for sometimes high school students to get married back in those days yeah we, we really go back <laughs> but anyway the world has changed yes, but has. God hasn't changed but God hasn't changed it's the same the Bible says he's the same God yesterday mm -hmm. today and forever yes. and just like the plan that he has for us mm -hmm. He has those same plans for you yes. and your marital relationship. Mm -hmm. And those of you who are engaged and looking to be married, and those who are, you are relationships are, uh, need some examples. So before we go any further, let's have a word of prayer. Amen. Right. Father, we thank you for your mercy and your mm -hmm. grace. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God, for this divine connection through yes. this covenant of marriage. Mm -hmm. Father God, we ask that mm -hmm. uh, you would allow us to mm -hmm. speak through the power of your Holy Spirit yes, to give out those mm -hmm. uh, nuggets mm -hmm. of wisdom and yes. insight, yes. God, that you have blessed us with these uh, 50 plus years. Yes, Lord. Grasp that those that were, mm -hmm. hear the word, mm -hmm. hear our teachings, will mm -hmm. uh, grasp home to your truths, God. Mm -hmm. That the words of our mouth. Yes. And the meditations of our heart yes, Lord. be acceptable in, in thy sight. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to uh, just mm -hmm. share a little bit of your time mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about continual renewal. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. A marriage. These 51 years, mm -hmm. I might as well say it, 51, be coming up 51. <laughs> um, right. Just like we were talking the other day, and I said well, we were talking about an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. And I remember when you uh, took the, the insurance test and passed it, you said, you know, honey, the thing about insurance, you get renewal. Yes. You know, you, that's how you, that's how you uh, make your money. That's how yes. you... Trying to get that residual income. Trying to income. get that residual income, <laughs> yes. that, that renewal. Yes. And I got to thinking about it. I said, you know what? 
we have a covenant. Mm -hmm. We have a covenant of marriage yes. that we know that through the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. is forever. Yes. And it's, it's, it's a divine, heavenly insurance policy mm -hmm. that renews itself. Yes. Amen. Amen. It, it renews itself. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk to you today about um, concerning relationships. Yes. Continual renewal of your love, our love towards each other. Mm -hmm. It takes place in uh, three areas of life. Yes. Okay. Continual renewal. Yes. Of a marital relationship, I believe, we believe, takes place in three areas. Yes. Number one, mm -hmm. will. Yes. Mm -hmm. Two, your actions. Mm -hmm. And three, your feelings. Mm -hmm. You say, well, okay, why are feelings last? Mm -hmm. But we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. And I want to share a scripture here from uh, Ephesians chapter 4, mm -hmm. beginning at verse 1. This mm -hmm. is Paul says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Verse 2, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Verse 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit, or the unity of of the Spirit in the bond of peace, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Mm -hmm. I want to go back up. He, he says here, um, I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation. Yes. Now, looking at that word and, and the context, we think of, well, a preacher or someone that's going into ministry. Mm -hmm. Well, in the context of the marriage, marriage is ministry. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Marriage is, is, it, it is, it is the first ministry. Mm -hmm. And so therefore I, I, therefore the prisoner of the Lord, that you beseech you that we walk worthy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of our marriage. Yes. Of showcasing our marriage. Yes. The ministry of marriage, our marriage ministry. Yes, yes. Our vocation. Our vocation. That is. That we are called. Yes. Marriage is the first call. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I say that uh, vocation is what we do, you know, a preacher, a teacher, a nurse, a politician. But a husband and a wife is who we are, okay? What I do, what we do professionally uh, to earn money or for a career, or what we're educated to do uh, is a calling that's high, and we want to walk worthy of that. Mm -hmm. But the highest calling is that of marriage, when you get married, you no longer are defined by your vocation that you've been trained for in the secular world. Now, I don't really like to separate the secular for the sacred, from the sacred, because I think everything that we do should be service unto the Lord and yes. should be ministry. I think teachers and nurses are probably at the top of the list as far as ministers because every day they are saving lives. I mean, you've got to be anointed to be a teacher, a teacher who really cares, particularly in this day and time, and to be a nurse. I've been on the side. I have been a patient. As you all know, I have to care for my mother, and uh, I'm around health care givers and all the time with her and in other hospitals and thank you for your prayers because she has a miracle story that God has done for her in the last month but I watch these people as they minister to her Curtis and I'm looking at them thanking God for them and praying for them mm -hmm. and saying this is and almost feel like I'm not doing anything really in my ministry call I am but compared to what they're giving of their time and their effort I salute them. I tell them, I said, you all are God's angels. So that is ministry. But when we become married, when I go to the, when I went to the altar, when you go down to the altar, or whether you go to the justice of a peace, however your marriage ceremony takes place, there is a divine uh, connection and communion in the spirit 
with God, who is the only one that whose plan it is for marriage, who sanctions marriage, who sanctified marriage, who called it as a covenant that puts that takes precedence over everything that I'm doing in my daily vocation for which I have been trained. Mm -hmm. I think when I when they pronounce you and I husband and wife, when you are pronounced husband and wife, that redefines my primary vocation to being who I am. What Jeanette does in the church or yes. Curtis does on his job or in the church, that is what we do. But who we are is I am his wife, he is my husband, they pronounced us husband and wife, gave me your name before witnesses, it's recorded in, in the state, it's on record. And you can't get out of it except God allows it through some type of legal process. Yes. So now I am who I am is the wife of Curtis Hampton, my highest calling. Who you are is the who husband is of husband. Jeanette Hampton. Yes. They said that, right? That's After right. took the vows. That's right. You and are I, now? My vows <laughs> I took before you, before God and, and, mm -hmm. and the congregation and the preacher, you know, to love and sickness and health, the death do us part. And so that has become my ministry. Right. That is my ministry. Right. My first. Right. My first call. Right. Is to right. you, okay, mm -hmm. and the family. Absolutely. You are a Our husband and father first. first. Husband, father first. I'm a wife and mother first. I have, there were times when I would go out to speak and people would want to know, well, what is your, um, you know, who are you? What is your title? I said, well, first of all, I am Jeanette Hampton, the wife of Curtis Hampton. Yes, I have identity, but my first call is a wife, and of course, being a mom, I love that. So the highest calling to me is being a mother and a wife. That's who I am. Everything else is what I do. So that vocation, uh, walking worthy of it. Walking worthy. Yeah, we got to work on walking worthy That's of, right. of being a... And so, mm -hmm. um, as a marriage, and people seeing what a Christian marriage look like. Mm -hmm. Are we walking worthy? Yes. Okay, are we walk, walking worthy from which mm -hmm. we are called? And we're called to this. Absolutely. We're called to this. Yes, we I are. I believe that when God made the man and he took out of the man the rib and fashioned the woman, and he said, this is now, he said, this is now bone of my bone, mm -hmm. flesh of my flesh, and he gave them the com commission to be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. That's a calling. Yes, it is. That's a calling to go mm -hmm. out and represent me, my image mm -hmm. of what a, what a family mm -hmm. is like. Mm -hmm. So that's a calling. A holy calling. A holy calling. Yes, it is. And verse, verse 2 says, with, we do this mm -hmm. with all lowliness mm -hmm. and meekness, with all humility. Yes, yes. With all lowliness. Mm -hmm. yeah. I look at our marriage mm -hmm. as an example with the lowliness and the and the humility that God has entrusted me mm -hmm. uh, as a husband, mm -hmm. as a provider, mm -hmm. as a protector. If I mm -hmm. uh, go into some of the other things that that men would do is covering our wives, and so I don't look at at being your husband mm -hmm. uh, as a kind of thing that you know what. Uh, I'm your Lord and I'm supposed to dominate you and the family is supposed to be and subjected to me what I say I look at it with all lowliness mm -hmm. and meekness yes. that God Almighty Amen. has in, entrusted me to be the steward yes. of this marriage and this relationship mm -hmm. and this family that he has blessed us with so with Amen. all lowliness mm -hmm. and meekness mm -hmm. wow and you know, with a heart like that, what woman wouldn't want to submit to that? We really submit to each other, but you're setting the example. And I like the word you said, steward. God's right. called you to steward, not to lord over. But you know, I've found that when you are stewarding properly, that's just caring for what God has given you, protected what God has given you. You know, we talk about stewardship and finances and stewardship. It just means that you are being responsible, you're being diligent, uh, to protect that which God has given you. And so I, I, that makes me feel very safe and secure to hear you say that because that means that you are, that makes me feel as though you're watching to make sure that I'm protected, that we're covered. Mm -hmm. And you really take it seriously. I think the word steward, 
kind of implies really uh, more of a serious uh, responsibility I don't think most husbands and wives take in this marriage covenant and particularly like you said as the husband to steward because you you felt that sense of responsibility to do yes. that and I think when you when you look at it from that perspective it makes the word submission a lot less threatening because for a lot of people it is uh, particularly women but we both submit to each other but it's not a problem when your husband of husbands when you approach your wives with the responsibility mm -hmm. that God has given you to steward over that household that means everything that's involved you know like you said yeah and what I'm what I've come to to understand uh, biblical submission is mutual submission it is husband it is love your wife it is okay mm -hmm. wives submit to your husbands mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they're there's a there's mm -hmm. mutual submission mm -hmm. to each other. Mm -hmm. God gets the glory. That's right. And the, and the family, mm -hmm. there's harmony mm -hmm. within the family. That's true. But you know, it starts with the attitude, the attitude of submission. I mean, humility that you talked about. Yes. Everything really starts with a, an attitude. Right. With the mindset. Right. And, and this is why I say, you know, in order to have the ingredients of having a, a successful marriage, a marriage that honors God and that can bring you so much joy and so much peace is first of all getting your, your you have to have a humble heart. Right, and and and, and the uh, the first mm -hmm. I think principle I laid out is your will. Yeah, oh man, that's it. Mm -hmm. Your will, or mm -hmm. uh, the kids say, mm -hmm. uh, what is the word they use? That that mm -hmm. intentional. Right, be intentional about it. Your will. Be intentional about it. Mm -hmm. So the first again. Mm -hmm. Renewal, continual renewal mm -hmm. of our marital relationship. Mm -hmm. Three years. First is my will. Will, yes. An act of my will. Yes. And even in the vows, you know, they say, you know, when you say I do, I think they ask you the question, will you? Yes. Will you, Curtis, take Jeanette? Will Jeanette? I, I mean, do. They, I will. I will. I yes. do. So everything starts with the will. Yes. I will. I do. But now, if you say that, you you gotta, you know, there's some action there. You gotta warn that. You just can't say I will, I do on the day of the ceremony. But that's gonna be tested over and over and over again, and remind that, you know. And this is where you talk about. First of all, it starts with the will. So every day, I gotta say my will. Mm -hmm. You know, I will to do this for Curtis. Mm -hmm. I will do. I'm not feeling it. That's why I put. You said we were feeling last. You said I will first, and what was? Action. And you said action mm -hmm. second because. Yes. Faith without works is dead. You right. stood up there by faith and say all this at the preacher at the altar. But now you gotta you gotta have some words. You gotta put some action to it. And one of the things that you said I would do, you said I'm gonna take care we'll of your take care sickness of you. and, and health. health. Yeah. Rich or poor. Rich or for poor, yeah. right? Have to do his part. Right. Yeah. So when the money gets funny, you know. And change acting strange, <laughs> like they say. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> Oh my gosh! And you, 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 you know, you lose your strength. You know, yeah. you don't feel good anymore. Maybe it, it takes away, changes your appearance because of sickness, diseases, and all kinds of things. I've known many young women who came down with. I know particularly some cases of women who came down with cancer just six months to a year after they had been married. Well, you know, car accidents happen uh, after you, you've been married. I remember when you were in the military. A lot of the men went to war and they came back. A lot of them were injured. You know, and some of them, the facial fig features were mm -hmm. deformed or missing looked, limbs. Yeah, right. Yeah. They didn't. Yeah, yes. they like you and I. When yeah. you got married, uh, you went straight to Southeast Asia where I couldn't go, right. and for a whole year. And you know, you, uh, I stayed back home. And when you came back, fortunately, you were not on the front line battlefield. Right. Uh, but there were a lot of uh, friends and and you you know people that we knew of that age group that went to that Vietnam War, and they came back, and um, they didn't look the same. Many of them came back, they had scars, many of them were, had gotten involved in drugs. Some of them, unfortunately, did not make it back, but many of them were disfigured. They were not the same person. I know of some of my friends and young women I knew who married, their husbands went off to war and it's very sad. And one got married at the same time we did, but they couldn't stay married because when he got back, war had just taken his mind, he lost his mind. I mean, he was not the same man. It was so heartbreaking and so devastating. And they'd had this beautiful wedding and said, I do, but something happened. So the point is that, you know, people change. And so when that sickness and health comes, you got to remember what you said at the altar. It doesn't matter whether you come back with cancer, deformed from war or whatever. We had our will to stay and take care of you. Mm -hmm. There are husbands and wives who's, who cannot... Uh, they cannot function and serve each other 
in the way that they would like to. They have physical handicaps and they, they, cannot, they cannot meet the other person's needs physically in any way. And sometimes they have to care for each other with the personal care. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like Jonah Erickson Tata, you've heard of her where she's a paraplegic and her husband, he married her for rich or for poor, for sickness and health. I love that story. And he cares for her. That is his ministry for her. And so he, that therefore, see, he kept his covenant yes. when he said in the sickness and health. And so this is what we have to do. We have to mean that. We will to do it. No, I don't feel like it, you know. You know, it can tear it can wear on you trying to take care of a mm -hmm. a, a, a spouse who was ill or or maybe even terminally ill. And some couples even split up, I heard, uh, during cancer, particularly. I've heard a lot of I work with a lot of breast cancer. Uh, survivors because my daughter had that and a lot of them in the support group we've hearing that their husbands leave them and they can't deal with all that it takes for them to go through that so tragic and sad but a lot of people uh, who have illnesses it can cause the husbands and wives That's right. to, to they can't handle depression mm -hmm. stress or let's say they won't they don't will to do it because you have to will to do that that is not easy so we need to take these marriage covenants very, that's right. very seriously because you, you know, it's sickness and health. And that's right. It says which, with, mm -hmm. with all loneliness and meekness, with, I think what you, what you're describing, um, is part of that long suffering. Mm -hmm. What you're describing, yes. these these seasons, uh, mm -hmm. uh, these these issues, these things of these life, I would say altering that's events. Right. That's right. That's right. Long suffering, forbearing mm -hmm. one another. In love, mm -hmm. for bearing one another. Yes. In love. love. Yeah. And I think that is the key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then verse three says, "In keeping this harmony, uh, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit mm -hmm. in the bond mm -hmm. of peace. Mm -hmm. Endeavoring to keep the unity." Yes in the spirit yes knowing mm -hmm. that we trust the holy spirit mm -hmm. knowing that um this unity is very important mm -hmm. that remain that that you remain united mm -hmm. we remain united yes and understand the bigger picture mm, that's good yes okay of this uh as paul started off here mm -hmm. when he talked about the vocation mm -hmm. of of our marriage mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm our marriage, the overall picture of what he's called us to, mm -hmm. to walk worthy of, yes. to represent Christ mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in this marital relationship. Yes. So uh, endeavoring to keep the unity mm -hmm. with, with all I can mm -hmm. in the marriage. Understand that we have one enemy, and that's, that's right. Satan. Amen, amen. Understand that that's right. our fight, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. That's right. Understand who's behind it. Mm -hmm. For we wrestle not, the scripture says, against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities, but against powers, but yes. rulers of weakness. So there's an enemy out there yes. who, who wants to cause mm -hmm. disunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He wants to create havoc, confusion, and division. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that, mm -hmm. always look at the overall yes. big picture. Yes. And understand that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We have to remember that at all times, that he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And God's image, really, and that's what marriage represents. And so a lot of times the pain and the suffering and the hard times we go through are not necessarily for us, but it's for others around you to see how you're handling that. So we have to understand that this marriage covenant is not all, it's really not about us. It is about people watching us. It's about showcasing just unconditional love. You see how they go through that and Satan's coming after them. Well, we couldn't resist Satan's attack, Curtis, if we didn't leak, cleave together. That's right. If we didn't stand together in the power of the Holy Spirit. And if we didn't will to do it, you know, mm -hmm. it, the will. It's, it, you know, um, we have to decide. It's not a feeling. Uh, and I think that's where we that's, get mixed up. You, you bring it right into the last one. Feelings. feelings. Okay, we're going to yes. go there. Because a lot of times, if you're in your feelings, it's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. 
You know, you have a wonderful feeling on the day of exhilaration and joy on the wedding day, but those feelings will change. Those feelings change when devastation comes, when you are testing those vows that I, did I really say I would be with you? That I would never leave you? That it would be till death do us part? Did I really say that in front of all those people? And sometimes witnesses need to remind these folks that you said that you'd be with this person in sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer. So when you lose your job, when you have no money, when your lifestyle has to change and one person has to can't work anymore, what about those vows you made? We need to hold couples accountable that you made a vow. I guess that's why a lot of them are changing the vows now and mm -hmm. not they, saying they're making their own. They're making their own. Yes. But this whole, uh, the act of the will is so important, but the feelings is what we have yeah. to want to talk about now. That's right. Mm -hmm. Again, continual renewal mm -hmm. of your marriage relationship, our marital relationship. Mm -hmm. Three areas. Again, uh, your will. Yes. Be intentional, be determined. Yes. Okay. Action. Mm -hmm. Put some feet and legs. Okay, behind the wheel. Yes. And then feelings. The Bible says, before we walk by faith, mm -hmm. not by sight. Mm -hmm. Feelings. Now, you, you, you listen, well, I get all, I don't know your experiences when you, you, you claim this love or I get, I get goosebumps or whatever. I don't know what, what, what kind of feeling that, that you have or sensations that you have. <laughs> but this marital walk, Yes. This life experience that God has joined to become one in, mm -hmm. it's still a walk of faith. It absolutely is. It, it's, it's still a walk of, of faith. Mm -hmm. And in, in terms of the, the, the feelings, mm -hmm. your yes, feelings matter. Yes, they do. I'm not saying, not that, saying they don't matter. I'm not saying they don't matter. Yes, your feelings, feelings matter. Yes. But I noticed in the priority, it was, you know, the will the actions mm -hmm. and the feelings and we don't want the feelings to rule to rule we're not to live by feelings exactly we can't let the feelings rule but they're but they're very much important they're very important and how we keep that in balance and val is that the feelings have to be validated and this is yes. another responsibility in marriage is that we validate each other's feelings yes not your feelings don't matter don't, right. I don't right. want to that's to put that out there they do matter especially to us women because we feel our emotions, um, you know, are really, we live out of that a lot more than men do, mm -hmm. you know, we, we do. And feelings are very important to us. We are attracted to a, a man mostly because of the way he makes us feel. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's because the way you make us feel secure, you make us feel special. We women, we like to hear words that make us feel good. That's the way God made us. That's primarily how we are attracted to a man is by the way he makes us feel. Primarily, uh, you all attracted by what you see. And so when it comes to feelings, um, I need you to validate those feelings and say, you know, Jeanette, I can't change it. You know, I wish I could, but I can't change it. Mm -hmm. But I do want to understand, help me understand how you're feeling right now. Don't just shove it off. Just ask your wife, say, Help me understand how you're feeling right now, you know. And listen, listen to her and try to enter into her world. You may not know, but just it goes a long way to say, what can I do? What can I do to make you feel better? You'd be surprised, maybe something really simple, you know. It doesn't necessarily have to be anything big. You've done so many little things for me when I was feeling bad. and Oh, man, it just meant the world to me. So, like you said, we're not going to make decisions off feelings. We're not going to expect we're going to feel good every day. We're not necessarily going to feel loving every day. We've had days in our marriage that we didn't feel loving at all. We didn't feel loving. We knew we loved each other. That's right. But we didn't feel loving. So you don't make decisions that this marriage is not going to work. We can't be together because of how I'm feeling. You made a decision by the act of your will, like you said, mm -hmm. and then the actions, actions that we take, mm -hmm. right, right, you know, to, to nurture that to walk it out, flesh it out, as you said. 
flesh but it out. Flesh it out. <laughs> right. Yeah. But th those feelings matter, and um, we, we really need you to validate our feelings, men. That's very important to women. And we and you need your feelings validated. It goes Absolutely. both ways. Mm -hmm. You know, I need to not be caught up in, well, you know, I have a right to be emotional because I'm a woman and all this kind of stuff, you know. No, you have the Holy Spirit in you to help you. We have Him, and we don't want to put our spouses in a place of God and what the Holy Spirit can do in us so that we can. He will, I am a witness, He will take those feelings. If you take them to God. That's the key. Take them to Him first. And say, Lord, and you know, that's why you can't really, honestly, you cannot have a relationship, a successful marriage, unless you love God first. I mean, if there is a bottom line key to any success that we have had in our marriage, is that we love God more. We really want to do things God's way. We want to please the Lord. Yes. So I would say to you, if you love God and you love Him with all your heart and you want to love your mate through Christ, you want to, God to use you to help heal your mate to be all that he or she can be. Yes. If you all have that attitude, oh, you will have a successful marriage. There's no doubt in my mind about it. You're equipped to handle all that life's going to throw at you. Doesn't matter about your past, what you did. If you have a sincere desire to love someone else, to make their life better, and to give up what you want for the sake of them, forsaking all others, yes. and most of all, you love Jesus more than you love each other, mm -hmm. and you put him as the number one priority in your life, and you know this is ministry unto him, and you want him to be pleasing yes. with the um, institution that he ordained, you will have a good marriage. You will have everything you need in that marriage. It will be fulfilling, you know. Fulfillment means everything you need, you'll have. That's right. There will be peace. We talked about the peace. There will be so much peace. As we've often said, we don't have a perfect home because we're so imperfect. But we sure do have a peaceful home. Yes. And, and that's uh, because the Prince of Peace lives here, right? That's right. Amen. That's right. And so, uh, concluding this teaching, I want to also emphasize that part of the process of keeping your marriage fresh, renewed, on a continual situation, is your confession. Uh, yes. My telling you how much I love you. Yes. My telling how much I appreciate you. You, what you do for the home, for the family, for the kids. And the scripture I want to read here uh, comes from um, Hebrews uh, chapter four, uh, four, um, 14. It says, seeing that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession or our confession. Mm -hmm. I want to hold fast mm -hmm. uh, my confession of how much you. Mm -hmm. I want to hold fast uh, how much uh, I want to tell you what you do for us and the family. I say that you're the, you're the rock of, of our family. So part of that long, part of that process, if I want to add uh, another fourth to the uh, the um, the will, mm -hmm. the action, mm -hmm. the feelings. Yes. Confession. Yes. Yes. Confession. Very important. It's very important mm -hmm. that we we confess mm -hmm. how we feel, yes. how I feel about you. Yes. So I, I, I will kind of throw that in there. Mm -hmm. And confessing your faults one to another too. I like that word confession. That's very important. That's very important. Confessing your faults one to another that you may be healed and uh, keeping things secret and, and not saying what's going on in your heart, it drives a, a wedge of separation between yes. the two of you. Mm -hmm. And that's not healthy. And the thing about it is that when you get to hot button issues or the challenges of life, those things inside that you have kept, they've been brewing all along and they're gonna bubble up and come out and you could have a major explosion one day if you don't. Uh, confess uh, not only your faults but like you said how I feel about you mm -hmm. I want to make some confessions to you yes. I want to confess to you how I feel right now I want to confess to you 
you know, maybe what I'm struggling with right now. I want to uh, confess to you. Whatever it is, that is very important. Those confessions are important to your spouse. Now, we do a lot of talking. We don't confess these things to other people. We need to guard, bring other folks into our lives, tell them about what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's between the two of us. Yes. It builds intimacy, doesn't it? It does, and I think that, is, there again, is part of mm -hmm. the process of uh, forbearing mm -hmm. one yes. another, mm -hmm. confessing to one another that you may be healed. Mm -hmm. So part of uh, the process is your uh, your priest is your head mm -hmm. as a healer, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. And, and a, along with your uh, process of what you call to is be a nurturer. So in this way, we heal each other. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Thank you for mm -hmm. uh, tuning in mm -hmm. and uh, listen to us. Yes. Share with you mm -hmm. our life principles. Yes. Until the next time, honey, you want to pray? Amen. Father, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you, Lord, what you have taught us by way of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you would encourage those who are watching, Lord, to realize, Lord, that they too have the power through the Holy Spirit, Lord, and that, Lord, if they don't know you, Jesus, today, that they will accept you, believe in their hearts, believe in their hearts, oh, believe in your hearts that Jesus is Lord, that he died and he went to the cross, and if we confess our sins, Lord, Lord, and confess with our mouth, Lord, and believe in our hearts that Jesus was raised and that we would be with the Father in heaven, God. We thank you, Lord, that you said we would be saved. So I pray, Lord, that you would draw hearts and, and ears to you, Lord. Give us an ear to hear what your Spirit is saying, Lord. I pray that the couples that are watching will first make you the Lord of their lives, renew their covenant with you, Lord, and ask you to help them. By the power of your Holy Spirit, you will heal their marriages. You will heal their hearts. You will give them a good, a good life uh, that glorifies you through the covenant of marriage. Father, help us to take this seriously, Lord, that it is not just a good idea to be married, but it is a God-ordained establishment to showcase your love, God, of, of your, your love of your church, Jesus to his church, God, and to model out before a lost, dying generation, Lord, and so many who have given up on marriage, God, that if we do it your way, Lord, it can be heaven on earth, and we can have a touch of heaven right here on earth, God. And Lord, I just thank you for how marriage teaches us not to be selfish. I thank you for how marriage is, is teaching us every day, Lord. We get learning through our marriage, Lord, to prefer the other first. And Lord, to to submit to one another, Lord, because, Lord, we know, Lord, this is the model, Lord, that you expect us to have with you. And so, God, we just thank you, Lord. We pray that now you would just uh, bless those who are watching and that you would manifest that healing power. And, Lord, just keep us, Lord, in the palm of your hands, Father. And we just will give you praise and we will give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for watching. Till next time. Bye-bye.